Hey guys, Mark here with you, and I'm very excited to be back with an update for you guys. Uh, Jed and I and the rest of the team uh, have been basically quite hard at work uh, to get this alpha demo out, and it's finally out, and uh, one of the most important features of this alpha demo is the winemaking process. We've actually finished the winemaking process. Woohoo! It's good to finish the winemaking process for a winemaking game, so that's a great, uh, that's a great step forward. Uh, I'm gonna have to apologize really quickly for uh, the less than perfect sound quality. My home is not um, designed for, um, you know, for optimal audio recording, so you might hear um, a few. I'll, I'll call it ambient noises in the background, and I'm hoping that you'll think it's part of the game. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. I'm, I'm quite excited to show you guys uh, what we have. So you click on uh, new game and you got to give your vineyard a name first. So let's go with Chateau Test for now. Um, that's um, what I can think up of. <laughs> um, uh, right, so right off the bat you can see that you start out with three tiles. Um, you've got the Chateau tile, which is basically your headquarters. Um, that's where you can have, uh, up, uh, you can buy upgrades. Uh, you can track the uh, the financial performance of your vineyard, um, but all that's not important for the alpha demo. Uh, for now, let's focus on actually planting and the winemaking process. And then you have um, over here an environmental tile. We have two types of environmental tiles in Tarawa. One is the forest, and this is a forest, and the other is the lake. And what environmental tiles do is they um, basically give bonuses to planting tiles and that's the third type of tile over here, a planting tile. Basically a tile where you can plant uh, vines. Um, so anytime a planting tile is adjacent to an environmental tile like a forest, it enjoys a bonus and that bonus in this case for a forest, for being adjacent to a forest, is it gets um, bonus fertility which means that this tile is able to produce um, much more grapes than otherwise. Um, for a lake, when you get a lake tile, it's got a different bonus. Um, it's, got, it's got something to do with uh, being well irrigated and being immune to um, some negative um, status, status effects like pests that I won't get too much into in this uh, video. Um, so uh, at the beginning of February, um, all the way to April is the planting season. That's when you can plant vines on empty planting tiles. So let's do that. Um, it's important to note that there are um, three types of planting tiles uh, with three different types of soil. Um, the default one, or um, the one you start out with when you start a new game of Terawa, is loam. Loam is a type of soil, and this type of soil um, allows the player to grow two types of wine. See, there's a toolkit when I hover over. And it tells me that I can grow Cabernet Sauvignon or Chardonnay. Um, and also, um, there's a little icon that um, shows me um, statuses, active statuses. And this one tells me, um, it's exactly what I covered earlier, um, that because I'm adjacent to a forest tile, I enjoy, this tile enjoys a 10% increase in monthly yield. So you'll get a lot of these icons telling you um, effects that um, your tiles um, are currently under. So let's go ahead and plant. And it takes me to the varietal selection screen. And again, because it's a loam type of planting tile, I've got a choice of either Cabernet Sauvignon or Chardonnay. And you've got a short description, and you've got the planting price and the monthly maintenance costs. Um, in Tarawa, you only need to plant a vine once, meaning you only need to purchase and plant it once on a tile. And once you've done that, it'll bear fruit every year. Um, but of course, your vine could die. <laughs> it, and you'll need to replant a new vine um, on that tile. But I, again, I won't get into that in this video. Um, so uh, as long as the vine is active, meaning as long as the vine is um, bearing fruit, as long as it's growing, you've got to pay a monthly maintenance cost. And in the case of the Cabernet Sauvignon, it's $50 per month per tile. So let's go ahead and plant that. Let's plant our Cabernet Sauvignon. And you'll notice leaves start to grow on the vine quite slowly. And that's great. <laughs> that's a sign of that's a sign that your vine is growing, um, and it's on its way to produce to bearing fruit. Now, you'll notice on my right panel I have ripeness, the ripeness bar, and this is super important to the winemaking process. So, um, ripeness is measured on a scale uh, of one to ten. One being underexposed. 
that means that your vines don't have enough foliage, enough leaves. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I completely fudged that up. It's the other way around. Um, one is underexposed, and it means that your vine has too much foliage, too, uh, too many leaves, that it's blocking out sunlight to the parts of the plant that need sunlight to grow. Um, on the other hand, uh, 10 is overexposed, and that's what happens to, uh, to vines that have too little foliage, uh, too few leaves. Um, the plant gets um, way too much exposure to the sun. And um, ripeness affects the characteristics of your grapes. Um, obviously, you don't want to harvest grapes that are somewhere in this 8, 9, 10, or 1, 2, 3 level of ripeness. Instead, you want to um, harvest grapes that are somewhere in the sweet spot, which is the ripeness of uh, 4, but ideally 5 and 6. So, um, I'll show you what those uh, uh, grape characteristics are later once we finish harvesting. But it's important to note uh, that ripeness changes depending on how much foliage your tile has. Now, foliage only increases when it rains. So during clear days or during cloudy days, your vine will not grow any new foliage. It's going to stay the same, and because there aren't any leaves, its uh, ripeness uh, continues to rise. Your uh, plant continues to be overexposed to the sun. Uh, as soon as it rains, and because um, I can't predict whether it's going to rain, because uh, weather is based on... Oh, lovely! It just rained. And you'll start to see... Uh, uh, more leaves grow on your vine. Uh, the weather is based on a probability model that we came up with that act that's actually patterned after the weather uh, in France. So um, it's it's got its own set of, uh, of probabilities. So that's great. However, even though my plant has grown more leaves, it's still not enough to block out the sun. So it's still overexposed, and now my vine already has a ripeness level of 10 maximum. See, you can tell it's overexposed. There's an icon that says so. Vine has been overexposed to the sun and has stopped producing, meaning uh, my um, my vine has stopped uh, producing grapes, and my yield will never move. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that maybe it'll start to rain, so I can get more foliage, and maybe my ripeness will drop down. Let's speed up <laughs> time a little bit. Um, yeah, it's oh there you go. It's raining, so now at it's at an optimum level of foliage, um, which means that ripeness is not going to move anymore. But when your ripeness doesn't move anymore, it also means it's not going to drop. So I'm hoping for more rain so I can get some thick foliage and really block out the sun. Um, yes, yes, awesome. Oh, it's important to note: harvesting can only happen uh, in September, October, and November. Once you've passed November and you haven't harvested, all your grapes are gone. So you want to make sure you harvest before the end of November. Important to note. Let's continue. So it's rained again. And now I have some super thick foliage. And if I click on my tile, you'll see that my foliage state is heavy foliage. So now my ripeness is beginning to drop. Let's see how far it'll drop uh, before the end of November. So it's already November. Um, maybe I can wait for it to drop to 6 before I harvest. Let's hope. There you go. It's 6. I'm not taking any more chances. I'm harvesting. So harvest is in progress. You'll see a little um, progress bar show you um, how farther along it is. Um, so once harvest is done, you'll notice that the vine is now empty. And I can start the winemaking process. Oh, that started to rain just when I don't need it. So uh, let's start the winemaking process. The winemaking process is made up of um, four stages. The first one is crushing. So you want to crush the grapes you've just harvested. So when you do that, it brings up a menu, the crushing menu, and you will see your Cabernet Sauvignon's characteristics. And because I harvested at six, which is actually pretty good, you'll notice that all my characteristics, acidity, sweetness, tannins, body, are pretty balanced. Um, so it's important to note that balance, uh, that most varietals, and I don't want to be too much info, but most varietal, varietals um, are usually, usually make good wine when it's, um, when its characteristics are somewhere in the mid levels. But again, it just depends on the varietal, um, it varies um, quite a lot. But this is a good starting point. These are good characteristics. Uh, five acidity, six sweetness, five tannins, five body. 
Now I need to crush because obviously I need to get the juices out of the grape. And I now need to pick a method. So I've got um, pigage, I've got traditional crusher, and I've got motorized crusher. In the in the final version of the game, um, um, a lot of these options will be locked, and you you only start with the default option. But for now, um, we've left them unlocked so that uh, we can take you through them. So each one has a different effect on your grape. So uh, using a motorized crusher will increase my tannins by three turning it into eight and we'll take one second per varietal to complete so I've got to wait one second for the crushing process to, uh, to finish up um, but actually what I want to do is I want to use pigage the traditional form of crushing grapes it's closely associated with a popular image of winemaking whenever we see it on TV or in books or in other media uh, its effect is it increases tannins by two but takes five seconds per varietal, varietal to complete it takes longer and it only raises tannins by two so again you want to see which um, method is best for for your varietal for now let's go with pigage let's crush grapes so i gotta wait five seconds I've got a progress bar showing me um, how fast it's moving along okay so once that's done you'll see another no uh, notification icon on top of your chateau that means crushing is done and we can move on to the second stage fermentation so fermentations, um, the mechanics behind fermentation is quite simple. Every month you leave a wine to ferment, sweetness decreases by one. Now again, you wanna, I mean, you've gotta figure it out by trial, trial and error, but you don't want a wine that's either too sweet or completely dry and not sweet. You want it to be somewhere uh, in the mid levels. But again, it depends um, on uh, on the varietal you're working with. With Cabernet Sauvignon, what I can say is you want to get most of these characteristics somewhere in the middle. So I'm hoping to aim for something like uh, for sweetness. So that means I'm going to um, leave this to ferment for two months. Because again, every, every month of fermentation decreases sweetness by one. If I leave it for two months, it will decrease by two. So I'll get four sweetness. That's exactly what I want. So I'll leave that to ferment. And I've got to wait two in-game months. And that's quite a long while. So I'll speed up time. Um, your vineyard isn't idle while you're crafting wine. Because come February, there you go, vines are starting to grow again. See? So you really got to manage your vineyard and your time quite well. Um, for now, because I do oh man, it's raining quite a, quite a bit. That's good though, that's good. Um, for now, I'm going to focus on the winemaking process and sort of neglect uh, the growing part. It's raining again. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start the third stage, which is pressing. So after your, your, uh, your grapes um, have, uh, your grapes and your, um, and the juices have fermented, you want to press them. So pressing me, pressing uh, basically releases um, more juice from the um, solids and uh, and basically the remaining must um, in your in your wine. And what this means for you in game is, for every ten percent of pressed juice, your acidity increases by one because this little slider over here controls the proportion of my of my uh, wine's pressed juice and free run juice free run juice is basically the juice that's already um, that's already been extracted from the grape through the previous two um, processes uh, pressed juice is what comes out when I actually put it in uh, make it go through pressing um, to summarize what that means for you the player is you gotta balance the proportion because for every 10% of pressed juice you have in your blend, acidity will increase by one. So if my blend is 100% free run juice, my acidity doesn't change. It'll stay at five. But if I um, give it a 10% uh, pressed juice proportion, my acidity is going to increase by one. Because for every 10%, acidity increases by one. If I do 20%, acidity will increase by two. So for my Cabernet Sauvignon, um, I kind of like my acidity where it is. I mean, I could probably do with um, one more. So I'll leave it at 10% so that by the time it's done, I'll have six acidity. And also, you can see the effect of fermenting on your sweetness. Earlier, it was six, but because we left it to ferment for two months, it's down to four. So let's begin pressing. And pressing in progress. Um, wow. My 
Cabernet Sauvignon has heavy foliage. See, actually, uh, let's go through this now. Because my tile has heavy foliage, because my Cabernet Sauvignon has heavy foliage, ripeness has dropped right down to one. Because it's not getting enough sun, it's underexposed. That's also bad. So, in order to address this problem, what you want to do is you want to uh, shear your vines. Um, you want to cut back the foliage. And you've got um, basically these commands up here. I won't go into too much detail, I'll just skim over it. You've got these, uh, what we call worker actions. And what it is, is if I click on this, if I click on this, uh, I've got a bunch of tools and um, my worker actions, uh, I'll have I'll have access to more worker actions as I start research, researching technologies and getting upgrades. But um, by default, you start out with shears. And when you click on shears, you can actually cut back um, your plant's foliage so that uh, foliage decreases, starts to get thinner. There you go. So because I've got um, less foliage, my ripeness starts to increase because now it's getting sunlight. So that's important to know. Finally, let's go back to the winemaking process. The last stage, aging. So. It's already been crushed, it's already been fermented, it's already been pressed, now it's time to store it. Um, and you'll see my, my acidity has increased from 5 to 6 because um, during pressing, I made sure to get 10% um, uh, pressed juice at, um, uh, and 90% free run juice as uh, uh, my wine's uh, proportion, uh, juice proportion. So uh, with aging, what happens is you've got to select what type of barrel to store your wine in because the barrel will have could potentially impart different flavors on your wine but more importantly the aging process um, is the process that um, decreases acidity and tannins now if pressing increases acidity and um, your and ripeness affects tannins um, aging is the process that basically um, mellows them down. Um, tannin, too, too much tannin is not good, so you want to leave it to age so that the tannins start to soften. And what it is, is, um, let's see. Yes, so let's take common French oak, for example. So for every month you leave your wine stored in, um, in common French oak, acidity decreases by one and tannins decrease by two. So, again, it's a balancing act. And that's why you also need some planning because um, when it comes to aging, both tannins and acidity increase. If I didn't increase my acidity earlier and it remained at 5, the more I leave it stored um, in common French oak because, say, I want my tannins to drop all the way to 5, uh, my, my acidity will increase as well, will decrease as well. So there's, there's got to be some planning involved when it comes to managing your wine's characteristics. Okay, so let's go with common French oak. So if I leave it um, in common French oak every month, acidity decreases by one and tannins decreases by two. So done. That's it. You've made wine. How do you know uh, you've got wine? Well, you got to click on your chateau tile and whoop, you'll see your cellar manager. And here you can see your wine. See, your Cab Cabernet Sauvignon, it was harvested in November 2017. It's zero months old and it's stored in common French oak. And here are the characteristics. It's June now, so let's wait one month and let's revisit our cellar manager um, to see how our wine's doing. Uh, in the meantime, our uh, this year's growth is doing quite well. It's currently at uh, level four ripeness. So that's great. Great, so it's already July. Let's see how our wine's doing. Right, so because we left it in French oak for one month, tannins decreased by two, it's now five. And acidity decreased by one, and it's also five. So yeah, you know what? Let's wait another month uh, before we bottle it. Let's, um, let's, let the, let's let the acidity and the uh, tannins mellow out a bit more. Um, you know what? I'm gonna shear, I'm gonna use the shears. Great, it's August, so let's check up on that wine. Okay, 
So as you can see, uh, Tannis are now three and Acidity is now four. I'm thinking this is um, good enough. So let's bottle. Um, so you can name your wine. I'll leave it at, at the default Shadow Test Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. Uh, do, do I want Screw Cap or Cork? You know what? It's my first one. Don't want to get too fancy. Let's go with Screw Cap. Um, this affects uh, the cost of bottling. So Cork is much more expensive than Screw Cap. And we're also working on different bottle designs. Um, right now, we've only got about two. Well, we've only got two. Uh, but we're working on many more. Uh, so hopefully, in the final version, you'll have a handful to pick from. So let's go with the default red uh, red wine bottle. Bottle. So now my wine's gone from the barrels tab in the cellar manager. So I need, now need to move to the bottles tab to see my wine. Uh, it's a three month old, so it's been aged for three months. Chateau Test Cabernet Sauvignon 2018. Now let's organize wine tasting. Organizing wine tasting is super important because organizing uh, your wine rating the wine rating that uh, wine critics give you will determine your retail price. Let's do that. So, this uh, clicking on that brings up the wine uh, wine tasting menu, and in this menu, you need to invite wine critics. At the moment, in our alpha version, we've only got the minimum four wine critics. Eventually, we'll have um, a dozen or more. Well, more than a dozen for sure. Uh, but for now, we've got the minimum four. You need to invite a minimum of four um, wine critics to a wine tasting. So once you've selected your four um, choices, um, you click Invite Tasting. By the way, each wine critic has a prestige rating. So the lowest being one means that this wine critic isn't very experienced. His ratings don't really have a lot of weight. All the way to someone who, well, are... Well, Ingrid over here has four, but you can in the final version of the game you will get wine critics with uh, that are have five uh, that have five star prestige, and they're um, they they basically have the power to double the price of your wine. I won't get into too much detail, but that's basically a broad overview of what prestige is. So I've selected my four wine critics. I'll invite them to the tasting, and that will generate a rating for my wine. So um, Saul and Alex, I think, and Cost think. It's awesome, but Ingrid, uh, being a more um, more meticulous um, wine critic, uh, has only given me three. And again, higher prestige means uh, the wine critic will be much more unforgiving when it comes to your wine. It's easy to impress a one, two, even a three-star uh, critic, but when it comes to a four, especially a five-star critic, you really got to make sure um, your wine's perfect. So once that's done, um, I get taken back to the seller manager and now I can sell my wine because it's been rated so I when I click on sell it brings up the market menu and I've got different distributors in the final version of the game we're looking at um, maybe um, twice as many but right now we've got three and you'll see the name of the distributor the distributor relations uh, relations uh, rating the price per bottle and the quantity now the price per bottle, $25, was decided because of my rating. It automatically decided it was $25. We've got a secret equation that calculates this. Obviously, I won't reveal it. But um, obviously, the higher the rating, the higher the price per bottle. Now, um, this number over here, uh, distributor relations, it increases the more you sell. And the higher the distributor relationship rating, um, the more quantity they'll buy from you. So it's important to um, basically develop a relationship and um, you know, basically form a, um, a loyal partnership with uh, maybe one or two distributors so that you maximize how much they'll buy from you. And, that's, and the more they buy, it's always a good thing. So I've got 840 bottles. I'm going to sell the maximum 420 to Fair and Brothers and um, the maximum 420 to Hogan and that leaves me with zero and I'll sell and now I don't know if you've noticed this from the beginning of the game but I started the game with 10 million dollars and in the final version of the game you're not gonna start out with 10 million dollars the reason I uh, put it at 10 million dollars is because I wanted to make sure I could use all the options I had 
just so I can take you through the different features. But um, if I click sell, you'll notice the number uh, increase marginally. So 9.98, 9.981 million is now 10 million. See? So there it is. You actually, we've actually made our first batch of wine. We've sold it. It's all good. Now, um, I just want to show you guys uh, a few other things. The tile purchase, um, the tile purchase and tile reroll um, uh, mechanic. So all the tiles that are white are tiles that I don't own, but they're available for purchase. So say I want to buy this over here, a loam uh, type um, planting tile, just like the one I already own. Um, I can purchase this. I can, you know, I can look at the information about it. I can look at the uh, effects that it's currently under, and I can either add the tile. And the tooltip says it's twenty thousand dollars. I can do that. Voila! So it's now mine, and I can plant on it come um, February. Or I could go to another tile like this one, and I can re-roll. So the first re-roll is relatively cheap, a thousand. So I've got a loan loan tile type uh, uh, type tile. Uh, I click reroll, it rerolls to a new t uh, type of tile, and now it's forest. Um, <laughs> and the tooltip says something about forest. We're still working on uh, uh, a few of the other tooltips, but we'll get there. Um, and I'm say I don't want a forest, say I want a lake. So I want to keep rerolling. Re but every subsequent reroll um, is much more expensive, so now it's $5,000 for another reroll. And I've rerolled and I get a sandy type planting soil. Uh, and I want to keep rerolling, and now it's 25000 So there's a financial penalty um, for um, always rerolling the tiles. So let's reroll that. That's clay, it's still not um, a lake. That's 150000 There. So it's finally a lake, and I can add that tile. Now, again, a lake is an environmental tile. And uh, now if I click on a, on a planting tile adjacent to it, I've now got a second status effect. This tile is adjacent to a lake and enjoys immunity from phylloxera for the first 50 years of a vine's life and at a reduced rate onwards. Phylloxera is a type of pest. Uh, I won't get into too much details, uh, but trust me, immunity from phylloxera is actually kind of important. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's the winemaking process, and we're very happy that we're done with that. Uh, we're actually going to begin al the alpha testing, um, the, the alpha testing, um, quite soon. So um, we expect to get a lot of really good feedback from that to improve the balance of the economy, the balance of the difficulty, and maybe sort out, find out, and sort um, sort out some bugs. Thank you so much for watching. Um, for basically <laughs> sitting through the whole video. Um, it was such a joy um, finishing this alpha, uh, this alpha demo. The winemaking process is finally done. Um, most of the features are pretty much done. We're just working on some additional animations, some new models. And of course, this game mechanic that um, I'm teasing now called the mystery box. And the mystery box basically gives the players different missions to accomplish. Um, expect that in the next update, uh, but we're very excited to share that with you. So, thank you so much for um, um, for watching this video. Please, please, please um, stay tuned uh, via our Reddit, our website, our Facebook, uh, and we hope to bring you more soon. So, yep, that's it from me signing out. Thank you all so much for the continued support. Uh, talk to you guys soon.